Many will say, the Lord's way is not fair. But the prophets say, let me tell you if it is the Lord or yours is unfair. And he said in the first reading, remember that if someone who is a righteous up to do evil and he die in his evil, he died because of the evil he has done, not because of the evil of his forefathers. Remember, we are dealing with people who are in the, in the exile of Babylon, and they were very hurt that they have been sent to this, to this um, exile because of the sins of their fathers. And they say, why do we have to suffer for something my father has done? And Jesus saying, no, you too have sinned. In fact, you have done evil because you reject and continue to reject his covenant. And then he said, if somebody who is a sinner recognizes his evil ways and change his way and repent, then if he dies in his repentance, he will have life and life eternal. In the Gospel today, Jesus gave us a, a parable, a story. And he said, there was a man who had two children two boys. And he said to the older boy, son, today I wish that you go to the field because I need you in the vineyard. And he said, I will not go. But then he changed his mind, the gospel said, and went to the vineyard to work. He approached the second child and told him the same, son, I wish that you will go to the vineyard. And he said, yes, sir, I am on my way. But he never went. My dear people, Jesus tried to remind the people that what happened when he came. They had John the baptizer, who really was severe. In fact, the people thought that he was mad. He was crazy. He goes in the desert, he lives by himself, he does not associate himself with us, and he always chastises us for the evil we have done. Even to the king, he said to him, Shame on you, you are still in living in sin. You are living with the wife of your brother. That is not fair and is not good in the eyes of God. You are setting an example for the people. And then Jesus came and he was one of them. He went to their parties, he went to their weddings, he did everything they want and they thought he was a drunk because he was associated himself with people who are sinners. He said, let me tell you, that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to enter the kingdom before you. Few years ago, I was stationed in the village of St. Raymond's with Monsignor Reynolds today. God bless his soul, he is with the Lord. And uh, you know, when we read this gospel, I said, that's not fair. Because these people who are living in sin, we call them the women of the streets or the men of the street, whatever you want to call them. They are doing evil and they don't want to repent. And all of a sudden Jesus say that those people are going to be before him and used to say to me, Carmel, let me remind you, with all your goodness and holiness that you think you are, the prostitutes are going to be in heaven before you. I used to be very angry. And when we used to go to Canada because we have a house in Clement Hill, when we used to pass Wilson Boulevard, remember the old Wilson Boulevard? There was the, the ladies of the night there. And they would be all there waiting. And he used to slow down and wave at them. I said, you crazy, the bishop passed by. Him or you would be in trouble. He said, let me tell you, those people are going to go in heaven before us. And today's gospel really teaches us that it's not what we really think we are that are going to save us, but how much we really live the world. And that's why Jesus was very concerned. What is it that Mr. Watson and his wife bring the child today to baptize him? To baptize him? If that baptism is not lived at home, what is it that we profess that we are Catholics and then we live as pagans in the rest of the week? What it is that we sing the Alleluia's and the pews and we profess that we, are, that we are the most Catholics of all the church if we are not living what we are called to be living? Remember, Jesus said, not those who call me Lord, Lord, are going to enter the kingdom, but those who do the will of my Father. And what is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is what we see in Jesus Christ today. Look at that second reading today, how beautiful it is. 
when St. Paul is trying to speak to the people of Philippi, I guess that the people of Philippi are going through a very hard time. There are some divisions among them. And St. Paul is trying to exhort them. And look what he said to them. If there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any participation in the Holy Spirit and love, if there is any compassion, mercy, complete my joy and being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking of one thing. My dear people, that is the call of each one of us. Not think about myself, not think about my ego, but think of others. How many times you say, well, you know, your mass schedule is horrible because it does not fit my schedule. What are we doing here? It's not fit your schedule, but fit the common good of the people. And that's very important. Sometimes, you know, we are so concerned about me, 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 that we forget the needs of others. St. Paul knows that this mentality is not going to get us nowhere. And that's why he said, if there is an encouragement, if you want to make my joy complete, because for this I come to you and exhort you in the faith, I want you to live with one mind and one heart. If you do so, then everything that you profess and everything that you celebrate, especially in the Eucharist, will be a celebration of joy. And that's why he continued. Do not do things out of selfishness and vanagloria. How many times we do things because this is what I like. This is, I do this because this is what I profit from it. How many times we do things for people to see? Oh, God loves us. We have plenty of them around. We do things because we want other people to really be impressed with us. Oh, I go to church so my neighbor will say, look how religious they are. Oh, I really, you know, fast on the days of Lent so that the people think how wonderful I am. Oh, on Ash Wednesday I make sure that I have that big black cross. I mean, you look like a whatever when you go to work with it. But the only thing is this, that is what we need to show. That is our faith? I don't think so. And that is why St. Paul today is saying, get off your pride. Don't pretend you are when you are not. How many times, dear people, we do those things because we think by those things we are going to impress people. We are not going to impress nobody. We have a relationship with the Lord and we need to stress on that. It's not I do things for others, but I do things with one in goal, with one intention. Because after this life, I am going to be judged, not of what people say about me, but whom I am really in front of the eyes of God. St. Paul said, rather humble regard others as more important as yourself. Each looking for his own, not his own interest, but for others. Let us humble ourselves. Let us take away the pride that we have in our midst. And humble ourselves by really giving ourselves to service to others, to be there for others, to really care for others. My dear people, this is very important, and I take it very seriously. You know, I can today say, I am going to take off. I bring another priest here, give him $120, and off I go. They have to the people of St. Anthony. But did you think that this is my fulfillment of my vocation? I can do that, many priests do that, dear people. But that is not fulfillment of your vocation. You need to serve your people. You need to be with your people. Your people gave you a house, gave you food at the table, and so you are responsible now to serve them, to be there for them. How horrible it is when you pick up the phone, call directly in time of emergency, and there is no place. There is no one that you can talk, that somebody can come to your side at the side of the hospital when your wife or somebody who is ill. And the same thing with us, dear people. We cannot think of myself, but we think of others. It is very important that we understand that we are called to be a community. We are called to be people who really are created in the face of the earth to serve others.